Yo, what's going on everybody and welcome to the D-Lord NBA Podcast where we talk about all the latest NBA news and rumors going around the NBA. The podcast is available both on iTunes as well as my YouTube channel at D-Lord NBA. You guys can also follow me on Twitter at D-Lord NBA. I am of course your host d Lloyd. Today is Thursday, August 10th. We have a pretty good show for you guys today so you guys definitely want to make sure you stick around and listen to the entire show. Today we're going to be talking about David Blatt. He is now coaching in Turkey but he might want to come back to the NBA and get a head coaching job soon. Ty Lawson, he will be leaving the NBA. He will not be playing in China. Jaleel Okafor, he's playing for Philadelphia, but for how long will he be playing for the 76ers? But the first thing we're going to talk about here in today's episode, Darrell Arthur, player of the Denver Nuggets. He's extremely confident in his team. Now, it's not uncommon for a lot of players to be confident in their teams, especially before training camp and preseason starts. You see a lot of teams, a lot of players being extremely optimistic before the season starts. But Daryl Arthur might be a little too optimistic and a little too confident. Now, he said in an interview that he believes not only are the Nuggets going to make the playoffs, he believes they are championship contenders And he also said he believes the Denver Nuggets this year are on the same level as the Golden State Warriors. Now, I am a huge fan of the moves that the Denver Nuggets made this offseason. I definitely love the signing of Paul Millsap. I think he approves the Denver Nuggets. Now, Denver last year just barely missed out on the playoffs. I think bringing in Paul Millsap makes the Denver Nuggets a playoff team. I see them winning between 43 to maybe 45 games this season. So they should win and should be able to get into the playoffs, maybe as an 8 seed, maybe as a 7 seed. But I do see them as a playoff team. But going to the championship, I do not see that in any type of circumstance unless they're able to pull off a crazy trade between now and the trade deadline I see no way the Denver Nuggets are making it to the NBA Finals but Darrell Arthur he believes that the Nuggets have what it takes to make the NBA Finals and to compete with the Golden State Warriors in route to the NBA Finals I think he's entirely too confident but we'll see what happens I don't see it But like I said, you never know in the NBA, Darrell Arthur, maybe he knows something that we don't know. But I'm definitely going to pass on that, especially if I'm a betting man and you ask me to place a bet whether or not they're going to be even close to the NBA Finals. I will have to disagree and I could not take that bet at this point. But Darrell Arthur, he believes so. As always, I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. Let Hit me up on Twitter. Also, let me know in the comment section below how you feel about the Denver Nuggets this year. And do you think they're going to be able to compete with the Golden State Warriors? But talking about NBA champions and NBA contenders, David Blatt, he had a chance to win a NBA championship in his first year with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Unfortunately, they had a ton of injuries. Kevin Love went out for the Cavs. Then Kyrie Irving went out in game one. And the Cavs end up losing to the Golden State Warriors in that 2015 NBA Finals. But he ended up being fired the next year in just his second year as the coach. He is now coaching in Turkey. He says that he intends to make it back to the NBA as a head coach. Now, David Blatt, he was in a rough situation his first go-around in the NBA. He went to the Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron James was there. That's basically championship or bust. If you don't win a championship, it doesn't matter how good your regular season is. It doesn't matter how good you perform up until the NBA Finals. If you're unable to win that series and walk away with that trophy, your season is basically a bust. In this first year, the Cavs went 53-29, and a decent record, but they're able to make the NBA Finals. Injuries just completely derailed that season when they got to the Finals. His second year, he coached pretty much to the midway point there were 30 and 11 when he was fired then obviously Tyron Lue he came in then he was able to lead them to an NBA Finals victory but David Blatt didn't get another opportunity since then there were some teams that were interested in him but nobody offered him a contract he is still coaching in Turkey now I think David Blatt is a pretty good coach I think he's at least a decent coach that is A lot better than some coaches that are still coaching today. 
I don't think he's that top echelon type of coach, but I do think he deserves maybe another chance to get another crack at it in the NBA. I think um, he has a good game style. I think he's able to game plan and put his players in a pretty good position. But like I said, when you have LeBron James and your rookie coach, that is a very, very tough position to deal with. But I think put him in a situation where he has a little influence on the roster and he can really mold the team to the way he wants that team to perform. I think I think David Black could be a pretty good coach, and I would love to see him get another opportunity in the NBA. But when this is going to happen, I'm not quite sure. I don't see any situation where a coach gets fired and he's able to come in um, probably for another year or two. So, unfortunate, I do think we'll see David Black in the NBA again. I'm just not sure if it's going to be within this year or maybe even two years. Now, another story we're going to talk about here is Ty Lawson. He is actually leaving the NBA, and Ty Lawson will be playing in China for at least one season. He signed a contract, a little over $2 million, to play in China. Now, Ty Lawson, he's been getting into trouble off the court. On the court, he had a fairly good year last year, played about 25 minutes, gave you just under 10 points per game. He also averaged just under five assists per contest. So Ty Lawson, not the same point guard he was in that 2013-2014 season when he was giving you about 17 points per game and just under nine assists. But he's still a very, very good point guard who could be on a roster at least in the NBA. I don't see him no more being that guy, being the, the starter, but he should be on a roster. Only 29 years old. He's not ancient either, but the off the fi- off the court troubles, I think that has played him just a little bit with those DUI arrests. And I think that's definitely the reason why he's not in the NBA right now. But I believe Ty Lawson will get another opportunity. If he goes to China, he stays out of trouble, and he wins games, and he performs very well. I think Ty Lawson should get at least a camp invite next season, and he should have an opportunity to make a team. So I think it's all going to come down to what he does over there in China for the next year. But I think we'll see Ty Lawson in the NBA again. He's a good talent. I like the way Ty Lawson does play when he has his head straight and he has good teammates around him. Uh, if he's, He pretty much needs to be in a good situation. But if he can stay out of trouble, get another opportunity, find the situation that works for him, I see Ty Lawson coming back into the NBA. And I do see him being a pretty productive player moving forward. But as always, I want to know what you guys have to say about this. Make sure you guys hit me up and you guys tell me how you feel about Ty Lawson. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is Jaleel Okafor, the third overall pick just a few seasons back, never quite found his role with the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, partially, it is not his fault. He went into an organization that was absolutely stacked in the front court positions, and it was very crowded, and Jaleel Okafor really didn't get the minutes that I think he should have got especially if he went to another team. Now, some people say his play style is a little outdated. He's a slow big man who would have been great in the early 2000s, but now everyone likes to spread the floor. Everybody likes to play at a fast pace, and they like to shoot the three. Jaleel Okafor is not suited to do any of that. But I do think he's a pretty good talent. And I think in the right system, he should be able to flourish. Now, if you pay attention to what he's been doing with the 76ers, when Jaleel Okafor gets substantial minutes, he plays fairly good. I've seen him. I've been impressed with him. But the thing is, it was extremely crowded in that front court in Philly for so long. They were eventually able to move Nerlens Noel. I thought Jaleel Okafor was actually going to be moved at the trade deadline, but it ended up being Nerlens Noel. And even with that said, Joel Embiid, he ended up becoming the man in Philadelphia. He's going to be holding it down there. And that definitely makes it harder for Jaleel Okafor. I don't like when Okafor and Embiid are on the court at the same time. I definitely think they don't complement each other get well enough to be able to play them consistently together. So I think Jaleel Okafor is really playing his last couple of games, last couple of months with the Philadelphia 76ers. I really thought he would have been moved this offseason. It looks like that is not going to happen. But I think trade deadline. Jaleel Okafor is definitely going to be a target of a couple of teams. But I do think the 76ers are going to start to shop him around. Unless they can figure out a way that both of the two can exist on the same team. And possibly even on the same court at the same time. I don't see that happening. I do think Jaleel Okafor needs a fresh start. 
with another team. But he said in the interview that he's also thought about possibly playing for another team. He said the trade talks did get to him, especially during the trade deadline part last year. He said that the trade talks got to him. And now he's in a better place. He loves his role. He loves his position. But I think that is mostly PR stuff. I think deep down, Jalil Okafor knows he doesn't quite have the role that he desires with the 76ers. Now, Philly, they have a good young core. And they're going to be a team on the rise. But it's going to be with Al Jalil Okafor. So I see him being moved. I think he knows he's going to be moved at some point. And it's really just a matter of time. And it's a matter of what team is going to make that move to get Jaleel Okafor. Um, a couple of teams should be interested, but it's going to be tough now because the play style, like I said, spread out. A lot of teams now want to run up and down the court. Jaleel Okafor is now built for that, so you will need a team that perfectly understands Jaleel Okafor is going to be you know, that slow guy down low. He's going to be working out of the post, grabbing rebounds. That's specifically what Jaleel Okafor is going to do. He's not going to be out there shooting threes. He's not going to be running the court on fast breaks. So you have to find that perfect situation. I think a team will take a chance on him. I do think he will be traded before the trade deadline. But that is pretty much all of the news that happened yesterday. Um, I'm As always... Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at DLordNBA. Make sure you guys follow me on YouTube at DLordNBA. Those are always updated, up-to-the-minute information. You guys can see what's going on around the NBA in a good way. A lot of the videos, really quick and short, straight to the point. You get all the information there. And on Twitter, pretty much the same exact thing. But this is everything that we had here in this podcast. As always, I definitely hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you guys follow me on the other avenues. Twitter as well as YouTube but that is all I have I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow I hope you guys have a fantastic Thursday and I'll see you all tomorrow